All right, chemistry, this is your video lecture. Uh, we're starting unit one, starting our uh, pre-science lectures. We're going to talk about the Pledge of Allegiance. After this lecture, I'm wanting you to be able to explain the meaning of the Pledge of Allegiance, summarize the origin of the Pledge of Allegiance, list the procedure for reciting the Pledge of Allegiance, and then describe the point of the Pledge of Allegiance. So the Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So what does it mean? I pledge allegiance to the flag. To pledge. Pledge means to make a promise. Well, what are you promising to do? To have allegiance. Allegiance is either supporting or being loyal. This does not mean blindly agreeing with anything that's going on at that particular moment. There is a large subset of culture that believes uh, believes if you pledge allegiance to this country, you are simply following like a dog. That is not necessarily the case. When you pledge allegiance, you're pledging to support or be loyal, meaning that you agree to submit to the laws of that particular country, in this case, the United States of America. It does not mean that you have to agree with any political view or political action. You are you most certainly have the ability to, to disagree strongly uh, with anyone, even at the highest, uh, the highest level. You can disagree with what a president is doing. That is fine. But being loyal means that you are going to participate in the democratic process and you're going to abide by the laws as they exist uh, in the United States of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. All 50 states are part of North America. We all live by the same rules. That means that we're kind of like a family. Moving on to <coughs> uh, Republic. Okay, A Republic, a lot of people kind of misunderstand this. They think like, oh, the United States, we believe in democracy. Well, the United States does not actually have a democracy. They have a Republic. Um, the democracies are not very effective for nations the size of the United States of America. They go, oh, well, Greece, Greece had democracy. Certain city-states in ancient Greece had democracy, and democracy ceased to be effective. Uh, those city-states fell into ruin once they reached a certain population. And so for a nation of our size, we need to use a republic. Now, the difference between the two, they're still voting. Okay, Don't get that wrong. The difference between the two is that in a democracy, every single citizen of that location, whether it's a city, state, or a state, or a nation, every single citizen votes on every single item on the agenda. All of it. Now, you can say, you know, 250 million people in the country, that's, that's not very, it's not going to happen, okay? Uh, it's wishful thinking. So instead, we use a republic. So what every single citizen does vote on are representatives. They pick people who they think uh, have similar values to them and would vote as they would uh, if they did have the ability to vote on small things. And this becomes your senators and your, uh, your, and your representatives from the House of Representatives. So uh, people are free to make these choices for their representatives. They get to vote. And uh, what that means is that you can disagree on who should be your representative. You can disagree on those values. That's totally fine. The way you get to state your opinion is by voting. Moving on to indivisible. It means something that cannot be divided. Yeah, but the United States is divided into 50 states. Not what we're talking about here. It means that in times of crisis, in times of need, that our nation is going to uh, act as one unit in times of crisis. Uh, maybe economic crisis like a recession or a depression, maybe in terms of a national, uh, national, sorry, natural catastrophe, Hurricane Katrina, uh, you know, if you know, a volcano in Yellowstone uh, were to blow again, those would be the national uh, catastrophes and the, the United States would respond as one unit. Does not mean that there are smaller parts of it, right? That does not mean that at all. Uh, liberty and justice for all. Uh, liberty simply means freedom. Yeah, liberty means freedom. Justice means fairness under the law. Okay, the law applies to everyone, regardless of their socioeconomic status, regardless of their fame, regardless of their political views. Uh, they exist under the law uh, with the same value. And then for all, we're talking about every single citizen in this country, every single citizen in this country, in every state, in every location.
But what's really misunderstood is what it means to be free in this country. And so to answer this question, I want to uh, maybe get you interested in a fellow named John Locke. He's an English philosopher. Well, he's dead. He was an English philosopher, a physician, and a writer. Uh, one of the things that he wrote is a book uh, that's called Two Treaties on Government. Uh, one of the essays in that book is called An Essay on Liberty. And he goes through an exhaustive line of reasoning in the traditional style about what it means to have liberty, to be free. And his conclusion, after all of this logistifying, okay, after, after this extraordinarily long line of reasoning, and then he goes on to defend it a little bit further, his conclusion is that when people who disagree on a particular issue engage in discourse about their disagreements, when they talk about their disagreements and they talk about why they hold the particular view that they do, and then they uh, say why they don't hold this other particular view, and they listen to the other person do the same, and they critically evaluate their own stance, doesn't mean they change their mind. Okay, That might not happen. But, there's, but they're willing to change their mind if it is shown that there is a better stance out there or that their particular stance is incorrect. So if people have the ability to engage in this type of discourse, that means that you're free. You're not a slave. It means that you think what you think because you think it's the best thing that there is, not just because someone else told you that it was the smart thing to do, not just because it's what your parents thought, but because you truly think it's the best thing out there. So liberty to John Locke is the freedom to discourse on disagreements. Now this is a fun little thing from a, from a comedian, an older comedian named Red Skelton. Kind of took me by surprise when I was looking for stuff like this and I just figured I'd share it with you. Or not. Okay, well, uh, maybe we'll show that later in class. So, let's see how we're doing so far. Uh, check for understanding. Uh, what kind of government is in place in the United States of America? Is it a democracy? Is it a communism? Is it capitalism? Or is it a republic? It is a republic. Uh, what does the word liberty, me liberty mean in the Pledge of Allegiance? Does it mean freedom? Does it mean being a democrat? Does it mean slavery, or does it mean free market? It means freedom. But what does the word freedom entail as defined by the law of the United States of America? Does it mean that stuff is free? Does it mean that you can do whatever you want? Does it mean that you are free from criticism? Or does it mean that you can decide your own values and engage in discourse about them? It means that you can decide your own values and engage in discourse about them. One thing I want to point out before we end this portion of the lecture uh, is I want to draw your attention to C. Okay, Freedom does not mean that you are free from criticism. That is simply not true. Uh, you are most certainly open to criticism. Okay, uh, in, in today's culture, and you know, to a very large extent, rightly so, bullying has come to the forefront um, of our society as a negative thing. And again, you know, for the most part, rightly so. The bullying is a very bad thing. We're just trying to curb it, to get it to go away so that uh, students and, and people can enter in, into either school or the workplace and they can feel safe in doing the things that they need to do. However, it strikes me from my own experience that some of the younger folks are confusing criticism with bullying. It's very, very important that an individual has the ability to take criticism. For me, as your teacher, I'm here to try to teach you, to show you how to do things in a correct way, in a way that's going to uh, yield success for you. Because that's my goal. I want you to be successful. I want you to do well. But if you are not behaving or performing or acting in a way that's going to help you be successful, I'm going to have to tell you why exactly what you're doing is not going to end in your success. That's criticism. Now, here's the difference between criticism and bullying. I am telling you something about what you're doing is not going to help you be successful. Essentially, I'm telling you that something you're doing is wrong. Okay, Let's just, let's just oversimplify but the reason I'm doing that is because I want you to change your behavior so that you can be successful.
bullying is telling you that you ha- you know that you have less value than you actually do with the intent of hurting your feelings to cause you some sort of emotional anguish that's not what i'm going to be doing that's not what your teachers on this campus are going to be doing anytime a teacher tells you something that seems negative to you you have to understand that it's simply criticism okay we are pretty blessed with with a staff on this campus that uh, had for the most part great attitudes and they really care for their students and they want you to do well but that does mean they're going to have to tell you why certain things that you're doing aren't going to help you do well that's simply criticism and it's not bullying and i can tell you right now i promise you that i will never bully you i might tease you because i love teasing i you know making fun that it's, it's all well and good but it's with the intention of you laughing with me i will never mock you I will never bully you. I will never do anything with the intention of hurting your feelings to make you feel less uh, than you really are. Okay. The only thing that I will do is potentially criticize you. Now, hopefully, you guys are all such great students that that's a non-issue. All right. uh, That's only about half of the lecture. We'll finish up the rest of the lecture next time we meet.